Previously on Futurama Worlds of Tomorrow. And slowly gaining access to seven mysterious alien artifacts that are... Wait. The artifacts? Did you guys notice in the unlocks that there are these, like, really conspicuous gold bands around each of them? And the symbols feel... They feel kind of intentional here. Is this Futurama messing with us and hiding a message for us to solve? Is this why the video keeps messing up every time I say the word artifact? So, if you've been playing this game at all, you've probably noticed these artifacts. You start collecting them the instant you land in the game, but you probably haven't spent that much time actually thinking about them. I know I sure didn't. Uh, I mean, they look kind of weird and have some symbols on them, but most of the time when a game art asset has weird symbols or runes or whatever on it, it's just gibberish. It's just somebody who's just being artistic and they're just drawing whatever they feel like on it. Usually it's just random hieroglyphics chosen because they look neat. But this is not just some random game based on some random TV show, ladies and gentlemen. This is Futurama, a show that prides itself on being one of the densest and nerdiest shows in the history of television. Is it possible that Tiny Co.'s art crew would phone it in, in an area where the Futurama writing staff would normally put in a lot of extra work? Sure, absolutely. Except that Futurama's writing staff was heavily involved in the creation of this game. I remembered, since I was lucky enough to actually get to go to the Futurama launch party and got to see the Q&A session live, that one of the topics David X. Cohen made it a point to veer into was talking about the history of all the fun languages in Futurama. Even just the detail, is it is it true that the, the glyphs, the language in the background that appears, would, I, I read that people would start solving what they thought it was and then you guys would shift the language. Is that <laughs> we, true? <laughs> we had an alien language in the show that was, it was a simple code where you just substitute this shape means A, this shape means B. So we put it on, we're like, we'll see if the fans can figure out. We gave them like a, a sign that translated five of the, le five random letters for them and we didn't give them any other ones. So we thought, we'll, we'll check, we'll, you know, we'll lurk on the internet, see if they get it. So of course, 45 minutes later, they got it. <laughs> we're, like, okay, we're gonna do a second, much harder language, which our computer scientist in-house, Jeff Westbrook, our in-house computer scientist, wrote a program to generate a much harder code. Uh, that one took them several days. But uh, that, that, so, so uh, we put that in periodically, including one time when we even made a mistake in coding it, so that got the fans really mad. <laughs> but then at the end, he threw out this extra challenge. For you game players out there who are also math nerds, the game actually has an incredibly hard alien language uh, thing in it that's not even part of the game, really. It's just a, it's a side puzzle for you if you want to <laughs> devote an extra month to playing it. And uh, there will be a very serious language challenge for you guys. Excellent. Oh. Oh! The gauntlet is thrown. Challenge accepted, David X. Cohen, if that is your middle initial, and I know it isn't. Let's dance! So, just a few days ago, I was browsing through the kind of rough, but off to a good start, uh, Futurama Wiki. Seriously, check it out. Contribute to it. Game deserves documentation. I have a link down at the bottom. Um, and I happened to notice all of the super ultra high-res images of artifacts that they already have in there. Particularly, the fifth artifact. It's the last one currently available in game. You can get to it, but only if you've pushed to the very end of everything they've got out so far. Uh, check this puppy out. I mean, sure, it kind of looks like a big, squiggly piece of coral, really similar to the fourth artifact, actually. But I immediately noticed that this one has five characters on it. And notably, one symbol appears twice on the symbol. The, the other four artifacts leading up to this one all have exactly three characters. Although some of them appear repeatedly throughout the artifact, it's clearly the same three characters reoccurring for each individual artifact. Excited, I PM the guy currently running most of the wiki. Thanks, Rikenrar. I asked if he'd gotten any nice high-res captures of all the artifacts, especially the ones that are not 
in the game yet. And very helpfully, he pointed out that on Android, you can just open the file that contains all the images and just download them directly. So yes, they've all been added to the game. So I've got all seven artifacts, even though in game, I only have like three of them. But that's all I need is just the images so we can really begin earnestly sitting down and trying to crack this cipher. All right, so the first artifact here, it looks kind of like Saturn with like a wedge taken out of it. It's from Omicron Percy i8. You get it during the game's tutorial. If you've played the game at all, you have this artifact at least. Artifact 2, it's kind of like a DNA molecule or like beads or it kind of reminds me a little bit of wheat. You get this one pretty early on when you complete Mars. Uh, it opens up the Central Park District and lets you start unlocking Kith and Earl. So a lot of you have got this one at least. Uh, Artifact 3, this is clearly a fidget spinner, obviously. Uh, it's from the moon and it opens the fancy shopping district with Hermes. That's as far as I've gotten. And you can see clearly the same three characters are on here twice. So number four is squiggly orange coral kind of, it's really messy with bits of it definitely not even attached to the main artifact. It's from Chopek 9, the robot world, and it'll open up the red light district here, which is where we're gonna get Leela. Uh, a lot of you already have her. This one's the one I showed earlier, kind of purple coral. You can currently get this artifact, but you can't yet open the entertainment district. Uh, here where you can clearly see Madison Cube Garden and Mr. Horrible Gelatinous Blob. Interestingly, this is the only character you can see on a broken building who isn't a primary show character. Um, but the artifact will open up the entertainment district. Then we start moving into extra theoretical territory because you can't even get this artifact because you can't move on with that. Uh, this one looks particularly interesting. It's like almost a fractal pattern that's been extended into like a cylinder almost. It's got a big flat ring around it just like artifacts 1, 3, and it's eventually going to come from Amazonia, the giant snoo snoo Amazon women, if you remember that episode. Uh, they're not currently in game, but it will open the government district with Zoidberg here in it. Um, and it's seemingly the last district that we're going to get because there isn't any more land here unless they add any else in later. Uh, so that leads us to, I guess, just Artifact 7, which, I mean, it's kind of this big veiny thing. Um, it's pretty weird looking to be sure, and it's completely unknown. We have no idea either what planet this will eventually drop from or what district, if any, it's going to unlock. Other than that, the game clearly says that if you find all seven artifacts, you will clear the hypno-waves from the universe. So, I guess that's beating the game, or at least this conflict. Probably that even if we do finish this, there will be other conflicts to replace it soon enough. So, okay, I wrote down all of these symbols as they appear in order across all of the artifacts. Um, I found 16 unique characters, several which repeat across the artifacts, but no real clues as to what symbols substituted for what letters, if any. Uh, I was probably most excited by Artifact 7, which clearly has the same character twice at the very beginning of the word, it's severely limiting the scope of words that it could be. Uh, so then I wasted a ton of time, proceeded to spend a few hours just looking up all the words it could be. Uh, there's not that many words that start with a double character. I plugged basically all of them in, trying to spread the letters across the rest of the artifacts, and just generally taking a lot of wild guesses, and to cut a short story long, none of them made anything interesting. Uh, I consulted with some friends, notably my good buddy Steph and Kristen, to see if they could help with the guesswork, but also to ask if they had seen any of these characters elsewhere. So Kristen's the one who quickly made the discovery that, of course, obviously, these symbols also appear on the altar itself. Not just the artifacts, but the altar on which you collect the artifacts! So suddenly I had another five words of varying lengths. Uh, put it, put these all in, written out here, just so you have them. And what's more, I quickly realized that somehow every single word written on this altar is a palindrome. It, if, if you look at the order of the characters, they're read exactly the same backwards as forwards. The same characters meet in the middle and then repeat going back the other way. Uh, which means we have a seven character word and a potentially an eight character word. Uh, which seemed like they would be really, really good keys for figuring out what all of this meant. The seven character one I found particularly fascinating. I was, what could it be? Race car, reviver, rotator, deified. Uh, they're all pretty interesting, but no matter what I put in, it 
didn't really make sense when applied across the rest of the words. Even more frustrating, there aren't any single word eight letter palindromes. None, not a single one. The double letter in the middle really throws it off. You can do it by splitting the letters across different words, but that exponentially complicates the guesswork. So clearly I had to step back and look at the really obvious problem that I was facing because I am an idiot. Can you translate it? Of course, but only into Beta Crypt 3, a language so complex, there's even less chance of understanding it. I didn't ask for a completely reasonable excuse. I asked you to get busy. Very well. This isn't a simple substitution cipher. And more importantly, it's not an original language. This is AL2, the second alien language, sometimes referred to as Beta Crypt 3, but uh, in universe more commonly referred to as the Niblonian language, since it appears most frequently on things related to Nibbler and his species. Thankfully, the brunt work for this language has already been done. To summarize for you, AL2 is already not very easy. It's a numeric auto key cipher. What that basically means is that each character already has a number from 0 to 26. For the first character, that translates directly. 0 equals A, 1 equals B, 2 equals C, so on and so forth like that. But for every letter after that, you actually subtract the previous symbol's numeric value to find the next one. Then the new number is converted into a character as before. Confused yet? Uh, you should be. It's not a problem as there is a website that does the math for you, link down in the doobly-doo, so you can mess around with this a little bit yourself. Uh, you can just punch in the symbols or letters as they come in an order, and it'll spit out a nice auto-translated message for you. You don't even have to understand how the math works. Just know that one character changes based on which character comes before it. That's the important part. So nice! That was easy! Ha ha ha! Take that, you Futurama language nerds! Let me just um, tap tap this in here and um Oh. Typing in the artifact words through the generator still creates gibberish. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. Is this not AL2? But but the characters are 100, they're absolutely Niblonian text. That's intentional. Was it all just decoration and meaningless? Wait, hold on, hold on. Let's try the altar. We didn't do that. Now this one gets interesting. It doesn't make sense as a sentence, but when you type each of these words in individually, they look like visual palindromes, but it actually spells out yo mom, mom, NYC Doom. And then the words up on the arm of the altar read, I use a wig. I use a wig? NYC Doom? Uh, this is still kind of a riddle. Is this a, a thinly veiled Donald Trump slam? Are all these references to Mom, the longtime and yet mostly unreferenced Futurama arch villain, Mom of Mom's Friendly Robotics? Uh, she's she's not totally in reference to robot oil product is directly referenced in one mission on Chapek 9 But she's not in the game files anywhere yet and doom Sounds kind of like Morbo. This feels like the correct Translation of the altar. It makes a little too much sense to be accidental uh, even though it's still pretty confusing right now So mystery number one is solved kind of uh, the translator is conventional Niblonian of the type that's already commonly used in different portions throughout the show. But the artifacts themselves clearly aren't. Uh, running them through the same solve system as the altar gives us complete gibberish. So some other new rule set must be on display here. Or else we're reading the characters in the wrong order. Since what letter you get does change based on which symbols come before them. Do the shapes of the artifacts matter? Are they supposed to fit together somehow? Half the words are arranged on flat cylinders, half on flat rings. The first four artifacts each have three characters. The last three each have five. Are we supposed to read them backwards or read across artifacts? I, I actually have no idea. I've tried several of these and everything I've typed in so far has just translated into different types of just complete gibberish. I've carried the mystery this far and I'm stumped? Brave and intelligent nerds of the internet! Even if you have zero interest in a freemium 
microtransactional mobile game, and I realize that that is almost all of you. This puzzle is interesting. It has nothing to do with the game, and so far for me, it's been the single most engaging part of it. I'm calling upon you. Give me your brains. Your moist, succulent, juicy brains. How do these puzzle pieces fit together? What simple clue have I overlooked? Am I even correct about Yo Mom, Mom, New York City Doom? Or have I missed the mark by not using a wig? Please, leave some comments down here in the comment section. Uh, together, the internet is impossibly smart. Definitely way smarter than me. I'm going to be reading these comments, and I will collaborate with anybody interested in helping me get to the bottom of this. There's a terrible secret here. And I swear to the Space Pope, if this is a Drink Your Oval Team reference, I'm going to be very, very angry.